after Sunday night, we'll go all the way back to Thursday night. We had the Bengals versus the Dolphins. The Dolphins red hot out of the gate, 3-0. and Them and the Eagles, the only undefeated teams until this weekend. Joe Burrow and the white hot, white Bengal Tigers, whatever you want to call them, won this one, 27-15. But the story was not the New Jerseys. The story was not how great the Bengals are. The story was not the Bengals overcoming their Super Bowl hangover. The story was Tua Tungavailoa going down, getting hit, hitting the back of his head on the ground, and then going temporarily what seemed to be paralyzed. His hands were all disfigured and looked crazy i'm getting goosebumps right now just thinking about it it was just gross to watch we hope everything's okay i hope there's no lasting effects he was able to fly home with the team that night so it's all good at least from a uh, serious brain injury perspective he was cleared to at least fly that night so that's good but the original doctor from the game before, if you don't know what we're talking about, you're living under a rock, so like I don't really need to give much more context, but Tua got hit last week real hard, went down, hit the back of his head. This was the first time. Got back up, was a little woobly, almost fell back down, looked like a deer that's dragging around after it's been shot. He did not look good. His teammates had to come over, carry him off the field, he went in the locker room, looked like he was going to be done for the day, and then uh, 15 minutes later, he comes back out, ready to go, leads the Dolphins to a victory. Tua to Tungvaluwa has been balling and has been one of the best quarterbacks in the league so far this season, undisputed. Bring it a week later against the Bengals. He gets hit. He goes down. Head to the ground. He's out. Teddy Two Gloves, Teddy Bridgewater takes over. Proves he can still sling it. Keeps the Dolphins in it. Keeps the game a little bit interesting. But Joe Burrow, Snow Burrow if you want to call him, Joe Mixon and the boys was just too much for the Dolphins without their gunslinger. Joe Burrow was 20 for 31 with 287 yards, two touchdowns in the Thursday night victory. Then we go to Sunday. We'll go through these Sunday games pretty rapidly. But we had the Vikings versus the Saints. Captain Kirk, Andy Dalton, just two old white slingers of the football. Um, I don't know. Yeah, boring, realistically. Primetime Kirk got the W. He won game was perfect time for Kirk Cousins, 1 p.m. on a Sunday. Slade, the old veteran Andy Dalton. We will all want Jabu wins, Jameis Winston out on the field if the Saints are playing, leading those boys down the field, but it's unfortunate. The Red Rocket got the start, 20 for 28 with 236 yards and a tud. Kirk, 25 for 38, 273 yards, a tud and an interception. Dalvin Cook, 76 yards. Justin Jefferson, 147 yards in the game. Vikings win it against the Jabu winston list Saints. On to the next one. The Seahawks and the Lions. The over of all overs. You could have taken two or three overs. Touchdowns just kept scoring. Jared Goff scored about 99 fantasy points. I don't, if you have him in your starting lineup, I don't know. You must be a football guru or you're just a dumbass. But he dropped the game of the century. Seahawks defense has fallen off a little bit since the Legion of Boom if you're letting up 45 points to the Lions. But the Dan Campbell Lions, I am sold entirely on, and it's not just because of hard knocks. Dan Campbell is a great coach and will end up winning a Super Bowl, probably not with the Lions. But he is a great NFL head coach. He gets the boys going. He inspires confidence in his team. X's and O's, whatever. I don't know. We haven't seen it. But either way, the Lions are a cursed organization. He's never going to be able to produce or win with them. The Seahawks get the win. Geno Smith led the boys. 
got them a win in a dog fight, a gunslinging, hash slinging slasher battle of just points on points on points. No defense was involved. Not a single defensive player showed up to play. It was 11 v 0, and the boys just went up and down the field, probably traveling miles and miles in offense in this game. Seahawks get to win. Pete Carroll's still a prick. On to the next one. Jets, 24, at the Steelers, 20. Jets beat the Steelers, put the nail in the coffin on the Mitchburg era in Pittsburgh. It is Pickettsburg. Pickettsburg from here on out. Kenny Pickett took over. 10 for 13 is only three incompletions were interceptions, but he did have two running touchdowns, 120 yards after taking over from Mitch Trubisky. Zach Wilson led Gang Green to that W with 252 yards passing, a touchdown and two interceptions, but we don't need to talk about it, on 18 of 36 throwing. Zach Wilson also caught a touchdown, so we'll add that to the total. Guy says he's got the best hands on the team. That's because he probably got some feedback from his mom's friends, but we're not going to get into that either. Guy should be the time person of the year. But that's besides the point. Zach Wilson's back. The Jets look energized and ready to go on a little bit of a run. I believe in the Jets. Let's bring New York football back any way possible. Speaking of New York football, we had the Giants against the Bears. The three and one Giants after this week. Daniel Jones went down. 8 for 13, 71 yards. He looked good in the game. Justin Fields, 11 for 22, 174 yards. But the real story of the game was Saquon Barkley, 176 yards. Saquon is leading the league in rushing. Let me say that again. Saquon Barkley is leading the league in rushing. Saquon Barkley is the number one running back in the league. And you are not a New York Giants fan if you think that we should trade that man, you're out of your fucking mind. We build around him. We pay the man. He deserves the money. When he's healthy, he is the best player, one of the best players in the National Football League. And he will win games for us. We just need to ride him to the promised land. And I promise you, he will get the job done for us. Whether he's in the backfield with Daniel Jones or not is besides the point. I would like to hope so. I believe in Danny Dimes. I believe in the future of this New York Giants as presently constructed under Brian Dable. But we'll see how it plays out. 3-1. and one. Unbelievable start. If you were to tell me that this time last year, that this year we'd be 3-1, and one, I'd think you're out of your fucking mind. But here we are. The boys in blue. Big blue got the W against the Bears. It's a wrap. We're going to the Super Bowl. Fuck it. Titans, Colts. What a battle. Tennessee Titans post Taylor Lewan. Massive injury. Unfortunate loss for the boys, but the Titans are still able to get it done. What the fuck is going on in Indianapolis? I was told they were a Matt Ryan away from a Super Bowl. I was also told the year before that they were Carson Wentz away from a Super Bowl and the year before that a Phillip Rivers away from the Super Bowl. So maybe I'm being misled on the Indianapolis Colts not trying to subtweet Pat McAfee, but it's true. What is going on in Indianapolis? They can't block. They can't run. Justin Ted, Je- what the fuck's his name? Jonathan Taylor. First overall pick in all fantasy football leagues everywhere. The guy can't even take a step or a breath without having a 350-pound defensive lineman in his grill. It's a goddamn shame. Matt Ryan doesn't deserve this. He went from the Atlanta Falcons and that whole debacle, the 28-3, not being able to score in the red zone, even though he has Julio Jones, the greatest receiver ever. Just a lot of shit going wrong for Matt Ryan, and it's still going wrong and they haven't been able to figure it out in Indianapolis hopefully they will very soon fire the whole O-line get new guys in there I don't care if you got to search across the world for them we need a new offensive line for Matt Ryan the Chargers versus the Texans maybe a trap game maybe 
whatever. It didn't matter. The Chargers, obviously, everybody knew going in. Houston faces no poses no threat to the Justin Herbert Chargers, and they escape with a win. Justin Herbert throws for 340. And it's really all I got to say about it. Nothing too crazy. The Texans, they got to figure this shit out. They, once upon a time, not too long ago, were a decently built team, but it's unfortunate that they let literally anybody with any sort of talent escape that team. We had the Jacoby Brissett Cleveland Browns going to Atlanta to face the Marcus Mariota Atlanta Falcons. In a close one, it came down to a field goal, a three-point game. Jacoby Brissett, 21 for 35 with 234 yards and a pick. And Marcus Mariota, 7 for 19, 139 yards and a pick as well. Two rushing touchdowns for the Falcons. And it was enough to overcome the Cleveland Browns. Jacoby Brissett's been playing very well in the absence of Deshaun Watson. Not enough to spark a QB battle, the 2-2 two and two Browns and the 2-2 two and two Falcons. But it's enough to definitely secure Jacoby Brissett a job and maybe a spot or a shot at a starting job somewhere on a team that is looking for a quarterback. Jacoby Brissett has definitely played very well and has been able to lead the Browns in a time where there's a lot of questions flowing around the organization, a lot of distractions, and Jacoby has been able to keep it focused on football. He's definitely had a lot of help with the boys, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, but he even got a rushing touchdown himself. He's got weapons, David Njoku, Donovan Peoples-Jones. He's got people to throw to all over the field. And he has done a very good job as the Cleveland QB1 in the absence of the serial predator that is Deshaun Watson. The Falcons, on the other hand, they definitely don't look good. I know they just beat the Browns, but I definitely think that the Browns are a better football team, obviously, especially once they get Deshaun Watson back. Um, but the Falcons, like, I just, nothing about their team inspires any hope in me. I don't know. <laughs> That's really all I have to say about them. I'm not trying to cut this one short or anything, but I'm just out on the Falcons. They did get the win, so fair play to them. The next one, we have the NFC matchup of Commanders versus Cowboys. I don't need to even get into this one. You know how it goes. Carson Wentz and Commanders, you add them up to bad institutions of football you put them together and it gets even worse they scored 10 points against the shitty ass cowboys defense who scored 25 points with cooper rush who is definitely making an interesting qb conversation in dallas because Dak prescott stinks the guy sucks at football cooper rush 223 yards in the win over the commanders but an infant could throw for 223 yards against the Commanders. They stink. They're obviously going to be fourth in the NFC East. Hopefully they get a quarterback next season and make it a little bit of a competition. Maybe they bring Taylor Heineke out of retirement, bring him back to the pitch, let him throw that thing around a little bit. But the Commanders got to do something if they want to make any sort of noise this season or within the next, I don't know, decade or something. They got to. Figure it out over there. Next game, we have the Philadelphia Eagles at home against the Jacksonville Jaguars. A team, the Jacksonville Jaguars, that is known for just coming in and fucking up everyone's plans like they did to the Indianapolis Colts at the end of last season. They kicked them out. The Jags are always definitely a scrappy team that could fight out a victory, but not this one. We needed them. We needed them in the NFC East. We were all rooting for the Jacksonville Jaguars. They couldn't do it. Jalen Hurts, unbelievable season so far. Uh, you can't say a bad word about him, and trust me, I would love to. I would love to just shit on the Eagles, but they're playing so unbelievable football right now. They get the win at home in Philadelphia. Eagles 29, Jags 21. We move on to a battle of two unbelievable quarterbacks. We got Josh Allen versus Lamar Jackson. The Bills versus the Ravens. 
The Bills get the W on this one. Another very close game came down to three points. And all I have to say is Josh Allen is him. I also have to say pay Lamar Jackson his fucking money. Both of these guys, unbelievable talents. Top five, six, whatever you want to put them, they're there. They're in the top group of quarterbacks in the league. Lamar Jackson with his arm, with his mobile ability. Josh Allen got the cannon, could throw the ball out of the stadium. The guy, both of them are franchise players for the next 10 years and will be leading their team deep into the playoffs and both of them will be competing for rings for the next, I don't know, 10 years. So we will see how that matchup develops. Josh Allen and the Bills got the best of Lamar Jackson, even though Lamar Jackson did lead the game in rushing. But the Bills still get the W, 23-20, Bills on top. The next game we get into is the Cardinals versus the Panthers. Carolina, Arizona, in Carolina. And it kind of went exactly how you think it would go. It's unfortunate that Baker Mayfield's career has come to this point. Is this where Baker Mayfield's career dies? I really hope not. I assume and hope that he will get another starting shot somewhere outside of Carolina. This is where football goes to die. This is where Baker Mayfield's career mm, might be killed. It might be done. And I don't believe it's on Baker Mayfield. I believe that Baker Mayfield has the skill set, has the mindset, has the winning ability, has the throwing ability, has the in the pocket, scrambling, passing, all of the things that you need to be an elite quarterback, I believe Baker Mayfield has. I just don't know what's going on. He's talented. He's got it. I just don't. They can't put winning games together. Is that their fault? Is that his fault? Is that coaching? Is that the front office? Carolina Panthers have been bad, always have been bad, since Cam Newton left the first time. It's just been a cluster fucking organization. And it's unfortunate that Baker has been banished to there and was kicked out of the team that he helped bring out of irrelevancy for this dog shit organization after he changed an entire city from... Never mind. I'm done with it. (laughs) Fuck Cleveland. Hopefully Baker makes his comeback. They hired one of the biggest scumbags in NFL history, but it's besides the point. Baker loses. He's got to get his shit together. Cliff, Kingsbury, and Kyler Murray pull out the win. Kyler Murray throws for 207 passing yards in the Arizona Cardinals victory, 26-16. James Conner ran for 55. A.J. Brown received 88 yards in the air. And, I mean, the Cardinals offense, when you have Kyler Murray, who just looks like a Madden character with 99 speed, It's really pretty unstoppable, especially when you got the weapons that they have. And I don't know. I love the Cardinals team. They definitely came out a little bit slow. But they have the veterans. They have the talent. They have the weapons. They have the defense. And they got all the boys. They got dogs. And they got Cliff Kingsbury drawing up plays. So I think the Cardinals will be all right. And they got J.J. Watt, who's literally risking his life every time he steps out on the field. He had that whole situation with the heart uh, beating irregularly, the AFib, and it's unfortunate somebody in his camp, somebody close to him, leaked that information to the media, so he had to address it. He was borderline crying, reflecting on his career, talking about his family, his life, and his kid on the way. It was just a really emotional moment after the win, but J.J. Watt is definitely all in and ready to go on a run with the Arizona Cardinals. Kyler Murray is fully activated. The boys are ready to go. So we'll see where the Cardinals and where the Panthers, where their season's head, where their future's head, who's on the teams, how it goes. But we'll watch as it goes. The Cardinals win this one 26-16 in Carolina. The next one we have Broncos country. Let's ride versus Raider Nation. And Derek Carr and the boys brought home the win. 
Devontae Adams had 101 yard receiving. Boy, can Aaron Rodgers use that. But let's talk about the Broncos. Either the Broncos were not, quote unquote, a quarterback away from a Super Bowl, or we may need to have a discussion that Russ is not him and has not been him for many years. I'm. That's where I'm leaning, but I don't want to say that. I know Russell Wilson has the talent. He has the leadership, even though it does feel like literally every single person in that Broncos locker room fucking hates Russell Wilson. But that's not for me to decide. I'm not in the locker room. I don't know what's going on. The guy's a cornball and a clown. I do support him. I do like him. He's a nice guy. He's got a great career. He's done well. He's had accomplishments, but... It's time to hang him up. I don't know. I just don't believe in the Russ hype. I don't believe in the Russ train. And with Nathaniel Hackett, it doesn't seem like the Broncos are going to go anywhere under in the Russ era. So Raiders win this one. Derek Carr, Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs just absolutely mollywopped the Denver Broncos at home. And a serious question needs to be asked, is playing at Allegiant Stadium the hardest place to play in the league? Debatable. They've always talked about the Vegas flu, the Miami flu, every time athletes play near those two cities. Now the Vegas stadium is literally a nightclub blacked out with fucking DJ music playing 24-7. Players going to casinos, staying in Harris for the night, spending away their game checks. It's a tough environment to play in. It's a tough environment for the players that need to play there every week. It's definitely a takes a certain amount of focus to definitely stay locked in on football when you have all those sorts of distractions around you and you can get into some sort of trouble. But it's definitely a tough, hostile environment for away teams to go into Allegiant Stadium, Las Vegas, Nevada, and beat the Raiders, especially with the team that they're putting out on the field now. Raiders get the win. Raider Nation, let's ride. 32-23 to over the Russell Wilson Broncos. Patriots Packers, what a close one, and nobody could have expected it because the Patriots suck, but also the Packers have sucked at times starting this season, but the Packers always suck starting the season. The Packers will be all right. It's unfortunate Aaron Rodgers is getting used to life post Devontae Adams with all these young receivers. He does have Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb to keep the boys in line, but there's definitely a lot of growing pains. He also has Robert Tunyon. And then he's got the two beasts out of the backfields, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. But the way they've been playing so far this season, they haven't looked like a Super Bowl team. But I do think they have the pieces. I do think it'll start clicking. And I do think that anybody who's out on the Packers already needs to Follow the wise words of Aaron Rodgers and relax. On the other hand, the Patriots are dead. Bill Belichick will never win a Super Bowl ever again. Mac Jones has another six months left in his NFL career. I don't know. The guy stinks. The whole Patriots organization is a disaster. Sell the team, Robert Kraft. Go live out the rest of your days at some rub and tug in Daytona Beach and have a, have a blast with all the fucking fame and success and money and rings and all that shit, but it's over. The glory days are behind you. It's done. The Patriots are dead. Packers win. Aaron Rodgers, ugly victory, but we still celebrate him because it's a W, and you can only get 17 of those a year, and they're very sacred, and you need to hold them very near and dear to your heart because it's an NFL W. And let's finish with the last game of Sunday, primetime Sunday night football, Kansas City Chiefs, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, baby goat, old goat, old bastard, young buck. Is Tom Brady dead? No one knows. Chiefs win this one at Tampa in their home. Chiefs come in and absolutely embarrass the Bucs. They steamroll them and... It just really wasn't even close. Tom Brady still had an unbelievable game. He's Tom Brady. They put up 31 points, 385 yards passing. 
and connected with Mike Evans for 103 yards. Them two together are still one of the league's undeniable dominant duos. Can't be touched by many other duos in the league. And then you add Chris Godwin into that mix and a few of the other boys in Tampa. It is definitely dangerous. They will be contending towards the end of the season. But they do not look like the Bucks of old. Maybe it's Gronk. Maybe it's missing his presence in the locker room. Maybe it's Bruce Arians leaving. But I do trust in Byron Leftwich, and I would never bet against Tom Brady, even though he might be dead. But the Bucks will return. The Bucks will win again. The Bucks will come back. What we do need to talk about is how unbelievable the Chiefs are at football. Patrick Mahomes... Might be an alien, I'm not sure. The plays he's making, the things that he's doing, he's got the mobility of Kyler, even though he's not fast somehow. But he's got the arm of Aaron Rodgers, he's got the fucking brains of Peyton Manning, he's got the fucking goatness of Tom Brady, he's got a ring, he's got it all. The guy is it, he is him, he is Himothy. He's from the pit, not the palace. Patrick Mahomes has that dog in him, and they got the win in Tampa embarrassed the GOAT, reminded Tom Brady of who he is and how good he is at football and reminded him of all the things that he could do that Tom never could, even though Tom's the GOAT and the greatest to ever do it, even though Aaron Rodgers is the greatest to ever throw a football, but it's all confusing. Chiefs win this one, 41-31. And uh, that's it. That is all the games. Not it for the podcast. That's it for all the games. Let me just make that clear. Keep fucking listening or else i'm coming to hit you but that's it for week four what a week i was uh i was nine and six going into monday night on my picks not a bad weekend i was 37 and 26 year to date so that's still not bad winning record we do winning sergeant pepper's picks never miss and uh, we got the loss. So it's 37-27 and 27 after tonight. I obviously typed that before tonight. But we got the loss in the Rams 49ers game. We had the Super Bowl champions. Sergeant Pepper's miss, picks miss sometimes, but never. Um, we got big winners, though. I'm going through the big winners of the week. We had the Giants. It's always a big win when the New York Big Blue Giants get a W. And that's what we did this week unexpected just like all of them but the brian dable era in new york city is here it's a different culture it's a different vibe the boys are buzzing and it doesn't get better than big blue winning football games